So just to summarize, which we're doing good, I think. We all teach the nature of science. Every single one of us teaches the nature of science. The question is, do we do it accurately? Inquiry is not enough. We have to actually get students to wrestle with the nature of science and figure out why, how, uh, what this means for how science works. We can use historical examples to encourage students to think about how science works. <laughs> and then that, that continuum, connecting it from the historical examples back to their inquiry experiences back to the black box experiences. And then the teacher is the most important aspect of this. If you are not helping kids make those bridges, they're not going to make them. What questions do you have? Minnesota state standards and now include a lot more about um, like women and minority contributions to science and how they play a role. Do you do anything that, with that in your classroom? Um, I would argue that when you talk about the history of nature science, what I'll actually do is I'll talk about how uh, like a lot of the, the big names like Newton, Galileo. Einstein. What? Einstein. Einstein, yeah. Rutherford, I mean, all, all the names up until like 1950 is all men, ex with the exception of people like Rosalind Franklin and, and maybe a few others. And I talk about why is that? What's different now? And so we compare. And actually, one of the questions I ask students to think about culture, because my students really struggle with, with how culture affects science, I'll say, how would a scientist in the 1600s be different from a scientist today? And one of them that they almost always come up with is, well, a scientist today could be a woman. A scientist then was not likely a woman. Um, and then, and so we can bring in a lot of different cultures. Actually, when I talk about the metric system, I, I talk about why do we use the metric system as, instead of the American system. And we talk about how science is not an American thing. It is a multi-nation thing. And so, yeah, I do make those connections, and I think that has a lot to do with the nature of science. Because the nature of science at one time was a rich white men's game. Yes, like with, with Anton uh, Lavoisier, yeah. the French Lavoisier, yeah. His wife actually um, did a lot. It's hard to find those materials that, that highlight those, though. It doesn't mean they don't exist, it's just hard to find. <coughs> now, this, this previous question, what questions do you have? I asked that very, very explicitly, and I will take more questions here in a second. But then I found out that my students a lot of times don't know enough about a, a subject to be able to ask a question. So then I changed my idea and I said, let's, let's ask them what things confuse you. Because now they just have to point at something. They just have to say a word and, and I, can, I can go back into that some more. Uh, the reason I ask what questions do you have instead of do you have any questions is because you can answer do you have any questions with no. What questions do you have? You can, and so I, the actual, it's not just questions, it's the kind of questions that I'm asking. Um, so I'm actually asking a question that they, they feel obligated to answer. But some of them don't have the, they don't understand enough to formulate a question, so then I ask, what, con what confuses you? And then there's some resources which are all on your packet. My email is there. If you want to put your email here, if you did not get a packet, I'll send you everything I can. Um, I think there's only like one or two of the stories that I don't have electronically. Um, this story behind the science.org is for post-secondary, and it explains that on your handout, those of you who got one. Uh, but you can, you can read those stories for yourself and tell those stories to your students. Um, and just take out some of the advanced content. Iowa Science Teacher Journal, Spring 2008, that, that was an issue devoted to the nature of science. And then sciencestories.org is a group out of Canada who uh, is putting together a website that has a whole bunch of historical stories and things like that. And then there's my email, feel free to email me. What other questions do you guys have? It is almost 10.30, so if you need to leave, please do. Uh, if you didn't get a, a survey, I'll put them back here. And if you want to leave yours back here, um, I'll turn to you. But I would be happy to answer any questions. Yeah. Okay. I just have a question um, on putting this all together. Let's say you have a chapter or a unit, however you teach your groups. Do you, do you find yourself falling into a pattern of how you do these things together, or does it really depend on the chapter? You know, I think, I think, I think. Do you start with a story, or do you. I, mean, I usually end with the story. I usually end with the story because to me that's the more most abstract representation, the, the, the story, the reading. Um, I might start with a piece of the story to engage them, but usually like the full story where there's content in there and everything, I wait till the end because they need to understand something about the content before they can really understand the story. Um, a lot of times I have them read the story first. If the story has a lot of content in it, if they read the story first, um, I run into them using words that they don't understand because they read it. And, and they think they understand, but they don't. And so I usually start with like a black box activity because that's kind of something that they can all get involved in. 
and then I'll and then I'll we'll do some kind of inquiry activity. Maybe it's only a demonstration. Maybe it's more of an open-ended inquiry, um, which gets their interest, and then I'm already connecting it back and forth, and then I'll move to the historic the historical example. And it's typically like a reading. Method. Typically, and for for me, but I, I also try and weave in. Um, like when we're talking about the black box activity, I'll tell stories that maybe aren't related to the content. Like I'm not teaching biology right now, but I'll still tell students a lot of stories about Watson and Crick because they have a, there's a, there's a, they illustrate a lot of interesting points about the nature of science. Um, and, I, and I get my examples from uh, the double helix, which I think one of them wrote Watson, I think. And then Rosalind Franklin is in there, and so are their bosses and Pauling and all the most of the characters there. Helps. Okay. What other questions do you have? Can I make a plug for a book? Sure. Um, a sh Bill Bryson's The Short History of New England. Ah, yeah. It's like all excellent stories. Short History of New England. Short History of New England. And Bill Bryson is originally from Iowa, yeah. where I am originally from. Yeah. Uh, another book plug is Snowball Earth, which goes into that guy has a new idea Barnes and Nobles also has, you know, their bargain books. They're like five dollars or ten dollars, something like that. They have a lot of stuff that like has like history of science, where they'll have like, like one of the books that I have is about that thick, about this big. It's a big book, but it's got like a hundred different scientists in it, like just two pages about a hundred different scientists. 